All right, these are the patch notes for Throne and Liberty, a Korean version. These are for January 31st, so Wednesday in Korea. Uh, we're waiting for the maintenance right now. I'm going to read the patch notes and I'm not going to provide too much context. Maybe in some places where I understand what the notes mean, I'm going to explain a little bit. But for the most part, it's just going to be reading the patch notes. So if you like to listen to them rather than read them yourself, maybe doing some other things while listening, Hopefully this helps and it's going to be useful. So let's get into this. Um, a siege war is underway to determine the first owner of Stonegard Castle. Siege war Stonegard Castle will be held from Friday, February 2nd to Sunday, February 4th at 9 p.m. Korea time in the following divisions. So 9 p.m. Korea time would be 7 a.m. Eastern time in the U.S., uh, 12 p.m. in the U.K., and 2 p.m. in Eastern Europe. So you can determine your time. For Callus, Aaron, and Stoneguard, it will be on Friday, 2nd of February, at 9 p.m. For Soda, Crimson, and Einar, it will be on Saturday, the 3rd of February, at 9 p.m. And for Da Vinci, Luna, Foncin, and Burkant, it will be on Sunday, 4th of February, at 9 p.m. Again, that's Korea time. You can convert it to your local time. For more information regarding siege rules, strategy elements, compensation, please refer to the Notice Siege War Progress Guide and the official guide video Siege War. Alright, so update details. The equipment, attack, stat, integration and defense capabilities have been increased. The attack stats of the equipment have been integrated and the defense stats have been raised accordingly. Efficiency of investable stat points has been increased according to character growth. First adjustment, adjust equipment abilities. Attack abilities have been integrated into the equipment minor stats and characteristics. So probably talking about equipment traits, we're not 100% sure here, but um, here's how they've been affected. The melee hit, ranged hit and magic hit are all integrated into hit, just one stat. Um, melee critical hit, range critical hit, and magic critical hit all integrated into critical hit. And then this just repeats it, close range hit, long range hit, but what it means is melee heavy attack, range heavy attack, and magic heavy attack have been integrated into heavy attack, just one stat, hard hit, it says here. The defense ability has been increased in the equipment's minor stats and characteristics. Melee endurance, ranged endurance and magic endurance, uh, it's, it has been adjusted to be two times higher. And melee evasion, ranged evasion and magic evasion is going to be two times higher as well. Again, what it means exactly in terms of traits or equipment stats. Um, and how it translates to passive skills, perhaps. I'm not going to comment on that because I'm not 100% sure. Stats of some high-end and rare-grade equipment have, have that have the same or similar secondary stats have been changed due to the integration of attack abilities. So again, not sure exactly how these items are changing, but some of the green items like Shaman's Cloak, uh, Crude Flame Ring, Crude Wind Ring, Rude Wavering are changing, and then some blue items, like the ones you get from your Exploration Codex, Sophia's Fighting Ring, Robert's Focus Ring, Lutane's Mystery Ring, uh, those are changing as well. The effects of sets 2 and 3 have also been changed. So right now I think the ranged set, for example, gives critical hit, ranged critical hit, so I guess in line with these stat integrations, these items will be changing somehow as well. Character stats. Fighting spirit. I'm a fighting spirit. I'm assuming it's strength. The minimum and maximum damage per point have been increased by 20% compared to before. So strength attribute points have been buffed. Maximum vitality per point increased from 30 to 45. Again, more HP from trading into strength. Increased vitality regeneration per point from 1.5 to 3.75, so more than double health regen from strength. 
Wisdom, maximum mana per point increased from 30 to 45. And an insight, which I think is perception, the minimum and maximum damage per point have been increased by 20% compared to before. NPC changes, accuracy and critical hits of all monsters have slightly increased in line with the increased defensive capabilities of the equipment options. The occupation period of the origin stone, dimension stone, has been changed. So this whole section is about boonstone and riftstone wars. The schedule for the conquest of the boonstone and riftstone is fixed to 11 p.m. 11 p.m. Korea time would be 9 a.m. Eastern time in the U.S., 2 p.m. in the U.K., and 4 p.m. in Eastern Europe. The rerun cycle of the occupation war is changed. So the schedule is basically changed. Let's see how. A boonstone, riftstone operation cycle. All boonstones and riftstones in the server are fixed to 11 p.m. Korea time. Replay cycle for boonstones and um, riftstones will be changed as follows. Boonstones will be on a six day cycle at 11 p.m. Riftstones will be on the four day cycle at 11 p.m. My understanding is the riftstones are going to be capturable every four days, basically. In the other note before this, I saw that they mentioned these cycles kind of converge. And so every 12 days, there's going to be a day when, when all boonstones and riftstones are available on the same day, right? So second cycle of boonstones and third cycle of riftstones falls on the same uh, day potentially so we'll have to see if that actually how that is going to happen due to changes in the scheduling method before occupation the origin stone dimension stone so boonstones and riftstones progress schedule will be reset after the end of the maintenance and boonstones and riftstone occupation battles will begin at 11 p.m. on January 31st. The guild that is occupying the Origin Stone and Dimension Stone will be maintained and only the conquest time for the fight will be changed. So current owners uh, supposedly are not going to get reset. Notification of Occupation Progress. The method of displaying notification messages for Boonstones and Riftstones has been changed. When the occupation stone is given up or the owner is determined due to end of the occupation, a notification is displayed throughout the world. If the conquest guild changes while a conquest war is in progress, a notification will only be sent to player within the conquest war. So right now it tells everybody when somebody's capturing the boonstone, but it doesn't notify them when that has finished and when there's a winner i think they're changing this the other way around the big messages are going to be for you know the end of the contest or whenever somebody gives up uh their boonstone to try and capture something else later but when somebody's trying to actively capture uh the boonstone that message is only going to display to the people participating in that war the effects of some skills have been modified. Fixed errors in some skills. Common. Fixed an issue where some skills were not affected by en enhancement duration. I'm, effect I'm um, assuming that's buff duration. Some skills were not affect affected by that. Now it's fixed. Longsword or sword and shield. The debilitating target mentioned in the chance for victory skill tooltip has been changed to the debilitating target I applied. So... It's going to say for the debuffs that are applied by the specific player using the skill change chance for a victory. Dagger. The distance that can be moved to the next target with frantic sword dance has been changed from 12 meters to 6 meters. Fix an issue where frantic sword dance could not be used on terrain with elevation differences. Fix an issue where Black Wind Spirit was applied as secondary weapon damage, so maybe offhand weapon damage, not sure. Fix an issue where the cooldown time would be reset if target was killed within 3 seconds of disarming Cloak of Stealth. 
there was a bug where you could reset your stealth if you kill the target within three seconds of, I'm assuming, triggering it. There's something else in this area with crossbow daggers, I think, but no, we're not going to get into that. Cane, which I'm assuming is staff, fixed an issue where the skill range guide for ice spear appeared longer than the actual effect. Wand. Fixed an issue where the recovery effect of clay's salvation was applied twice in certain situations. I thought that was already fixed before, not sure. Equipment skills. Fixed an issue where the cooldown time of stealth was not reset when killing an enemy with an attack using Tevin's slaughter blade while disarming stealth or killing an enemy with venom injection. So I'm guessing some bug with Tevin's daggers. The combat experience has been improved. The change conditions for the skill, skill quick slot set have been improved. The display of targeting and combat information has been improved. That's interesting. Restrictions have been strengthened to prevent combat effectiveness from being higher than intended by using additional weapons other than the two equipped weapons. Something about weapon swap. Skill quick slot set. When you sit at the bonfire and receive the warmth of the bonfire, you can freely change the quick slot set and we have improved it so that skills with cooldown times can be released from the quick slot set. So you can change skills while at the campfire. The quick slot set cannot be changed while the toggle slot is in operation. The quick slot set cannot be changed while a rechargeable skill is being recharged. Battle information added an option to view only the harmful effects I cast in the target win window. Preferences, gameplay, character, attack, the default value applied as on. Equipment replacement. The penalty time for not being able to use skills when changing equipment during battle has been changed from 5 seconds to 15 seconds. So longer cooldown when swapping weapons in battle. Rewards for local events and field dungeons have been changed. Marin reward provided in the Peace Zone event has been changed. Ranking rewards for local events have been lowered. The drop probability of Marin in field dungeons has been increased. Local events. The Marin reward provided in the Peace Zone event has been changed to a polishing book, training book of the same grade quantity. So no more Marins from Peace events. Instead you get books straight away. Marind grinding book, training book reward provided as ranking rewards in local events has been reduced to 66% of the previous level. So the Marind rewards or ranking specifically um, are being reduced. So I guess they're um, changing Marins into books and then reducing the amount of books you get from these rewards. But at the same time, here they say field dungeon. Instead of redu in reducing Marind in local events, the drop probability of Marind in field dungeons using token of contract abyss has been increased. So they're buffing or, you know, allowing us to get Marins from open world dungeons because they're reducing Marind in local events. Some content and system convenience have been improved. We have improved the system to know the current peace conflict status in the region. Some improvements have been made to the party window and party recruitment functions. The conditions for using world and party recruitment chat have been changed to level 20. World improvements have been made so that in-game day and night uh, are displayed on the map and minimap, even when indoors in co cooperative dungeon dungeons, etc. Uh, the peace conflict status of Silius Abyss, Silabeth Temple, Ant Cave, Temple of Desire, and Dark Crypt have been improved to be displayed as map icons. And changing the nature, conflict, or peace of the region you are in, a message informing you of the change has been improved to be displayed at the top of the screen. Party. 
when there is another party member in Paola's dimension, a button has been added to the party list to directly enter the dungeon where that party member is located. Emphasized HUD representation when in party state. Whatever that means. Party recruitment. In party recruitment, a function has been added to check recruitment posts by specifying a category for each dungeon. So a filter, I'm guessing. Guild. The period of inactivity for delegating the authority of long-term inactive guild leaders has been changed from 14 days to 7 days. The practice scarecrow placed in the dual area of the guild hideout has been removed. So the training dummies have been removed from the guild dual area. Exploration Codex. In Wedge Desert, Treasure in the Dawn, when the treasure appears, it has been modified to last for 10 minutes. In Fauna's Basin, Treasure of Fauna's Basin, the treasure has been modified to last for 10 minutes when it appears. So the treasure lasts longer. You don't have to be there at the specific moment for like a few seconds there. In Akito Canyon, Pioneering Infiltration Route, I'm assuming that's the... Um, parkour puzzle, climbing puzzle. The platform has been strengthened to prevent players from getting caught in the penetration section of the flame trap. Whatever, the climbing puzzle has been nerfed, I guess, or made easier. Gigantrite. Stamina has been modified so that stamina is not consumed when using defense skills while riding the Gigantrite and receiving the Divinity Protection buff. Arc boss. Character with Queen Blendy's larva has been modified to always be exposed. Queen Blendy has been changed to drop the tradable Commander in Chief's Invincible Gators. Chat. The conditions for using World Chat have been changed to level 20. The conditions for using Party Recruitment Chat have been changed to level 20. Recovery. A feature has been added to allow recovery of two or more death penalties at once. UI convenience has been improved. Improvements have been made so that you can check where you acquired and how you used it when clicking on an item in the exchange. Tax status has been added to the main menu to check accumulated taxes. Other UI inconveniences have been improved. So for exchange or marketplace, improvements have been made so that when clicking on an item in the exchange, you can check where it was acquired and how it is used through a menu. When using exchange filters, the last filter status has been improved to be maintained even after the window is closed. The filters are not reset when you leave Marketplace. Menu. The tax status UI, which allows you to check accumulated taxes, has been added to the main menu. Rubbing book or lithograph book. When clicking on a rubbing book material item, a tab has been added to allow, allow immediate search and purchase. Content notifier. Improvements have been made to highlight the location of the list when clicking on the Adventure Exploration Codex marker on the minimap while the content notification management window is open. Improvements have been made to highlight the location of the selected codex list when entering by clicking the content notification, view content details button. Basically some UI improvements here. Skill conversion. Level information has been improved to be displayed when in the darkened list of switchable skills. Something about skill conversion UI. We have improved the ability to register switchable skills into slot for replacement by dragging and dropping them. Um, the shape of the cursor when right clicking and dragging has been changed to enhance recognition during operation. The mouse double click function has been applied to the special dungeon, dungeon raid, costume, character selection, and server selection screens. Other UI improvements. When time limited confirmation windows, party invitations, guild summons are displayed simultaneously, existing windows have been changed to stack instead of disappearing. Improvements have been made to display loosened goods in all merchant NPC windows. The guide message has been supplemented in, su in situations where voice chat using purple talk is possible. Function conditions have been modified to allow batch expansion only when there is a list on the television panel. Not sure what this means, uh, but we're almost to the next section. The display method of extracted items has been changed. Fixes. 
Content error correction. Fix an issue where the field boss mines a rock did not exit. Fix an issue where the dagger skill, frenzy, sword dance could not be used on the training Archaeum statue placed at the base. Fixed an issue where certain star tree rewards in the dark red forest were set incorrectly. On the third and fourth floors of Abyss of Cilius, the living armor archer bomb arrows have been modified so that no status ailment is received when defending with the defense skills. So now you can dodge or defend against the archer debuff. Clasps that cannot be used on the fifth and sixth floors of the Cilius Abyss have been modified to be usable. I guess it's easier to do the exploration codex now. Fix an issue where the boiling effect before a geyser erupts was temporarily weakened on Tyrant's Island. No idea, always worked for me. Fix an issue where players could penetrate some of the wooden fences placed in Cursed Wasteland. Oh shit, the Cursed Wasteland skips are being nerfed. Hopefully not all, let's see. Fix an issue where the camera distance was reset upon entering or resurrecting in Cursed Wasteland. Fix an issue where a magic circle would not appear intermittently even if you kill the shapeshifter that appears during the Magnaduke's battle in Butcher's Rift. Something about uh, Butcher's Rift then. Fix an issue where the rotation angle of Storm Raven was wider than either gl other gliding transformation. So Storm Raven was a little bugged. Fix an issue where the rewards for some areas were lower than the local level. System error correction. Fix an issue where the process was not performed properly when closing the opened window after interacting with the party recruitment bulletin board and trying again. Fix an issue where the number of party members was not updated intermittently in the party recruitment window. Fix the issue of intermittently skipping the target when repeatedly targeting using tap key. Okay, that's going to be interesting to try. Tap targeting is always tricky so far in this game. Fix an issue where when intermittently interacting with distant target by clicking the mouse, the object continues to move without stopping near the target. Hmm. Uh, fix an issue where the death penalty recovery value was incorrectly displayed at zero hours, zero minutes. Fix an issue where the guild relationship list was not displayed properly in the guild window intermittently. Fix an issue where unintended characters were displayed when party recruitment link and special characters were used together in chat. Fix an issue where unintended characters were displayed when entering multiple links simultaneously in chat. Mystic Key fixed an issue where the main acquisition location uh, was being announced as resistance request. Mystic Key can be purchased from a request coin merchant. UI error correction, an issue where when more than five rewards were obtained at once from the infinite gate, only five rewards were displayed, unlike the amount of rewards received. This has been fixed. Fixed an issue where red dots could not be printed in special store lockers. Sure. Fixed an issue where tooltips were displayed incorrectly when switching tabs in mirror boutique Fix an issue where the chat was deleted when changing the channel after entering chat. Fix an issue where the chat window size did not expand depending on the resolution. Fix an issue where quest markers were displayed incorrectly on the map and minimap. Fix an issue where when clicking on the quick slot of another skill group, the corresponding quick slot was not selected and the skill group highlight was not switched. There's some gamepad error corrections. I suggest you read this, pause and read this if you're interested in gamepad and you know playing on the gamepad. I'm gonna skip that. There's graphics direction modifications. The visibility of the weapon proficiency button has been improved. The design of the glide gauge has been improved to enhance recognition. The shape of some icons of party tokens has been improved. Infinity Gateway success failure notification has been strengthened. In the case of content that has not yet been opened through a chronology or milestones, I guess, 
The UI that displays which milestone it is opened through has been improved to be displayed in the same form. And then almost the final section, event and promotion information. Promotion, Battle Pass, Sophia Star. Battle Pass, Pass Sophia Star, sales begin. Costume, Warrior of Fighting Spirit has been added. Army Toy, Angular, Adolescent Rocky, Gliding Transformation, Seraph, Singus are added. Okay, so remember to use your Battle Pass tokens if you have any after you finished your Battle Pass tasks for the month uh, because the Battle Pass switches over uh, day, basically. I think you might be able to use the tokens later, but I'm not going to risk it. I'm going to spend them now. Promotion. Resistance Lucent plus Solent package. A product that allows you to purchase Lucent and Solent together will be added. This product can be purchased twice per month per account and the number of purchases is reset at midnight on the first of every month. End event. New world double up. The event has ended. The amount of compensation for field and arc bosses has been adjusted. Right now you get two chests from field bosses. You'll get one. The amount of compensation for boonstone and riftstone has been adjusted. Resource production per hour and guild activity points per minute were doubled, now changed to one times, like before. Proof of contract paid via mail, limited to weekends, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. The dimensional compensation amount has been adjusted, existing 900 changed to zero. So we're not getting the double tokens via mail like we've been getting on the weekends anymore. And final section, known issues. We will do our best to quickly correct any abnormalities occurring in the game below. We apologize for inconvenience this may cause you. Battle. Frantic sword dance. When the target is attached to wall or object, the skill may be interrupted during use. There is an issue where corruption fool effect is applied to players other than the caster. System. Option not to display other players' skills rendering does not work properly. Okay, works for me in some way, I guess. You can change this in preferences, gameplay, character, attack, and the default, default setting is print all. We have corrected an issue where another user's skill rendering attacking the target you are targeting is displayed, but some decals are being displayed, so further modifications are planned. All right. That's, I noticed that, but it still improved the performance. Let's see how they improve it further. There's a phenomenon in which the unequipment icon for sh a shortcut equipped with Stella Boom is displayed as the icon for Stella Boom that was worn immediately before. So I guess there's a bug with what Stellarites are being displayed on your HUD. We look forward to seeing you with more exciting updates in the future. Thank you. Throne and Liberty.